This episode of Test Drive is brought to you by Elmec and their EV Duty Smart Home Charger. Welcome back everyone. Today we have another episode of PRN POV and I'm sitting inside a 2024 Volvo XC40 recharge single motor. Now Volvo hasn't done a rear wheel drive car in decades, but now they are back with electric version of that. And this configuration is in the C40 as well as the XC40 right here. Now this Volvo starts at around 63,000 Canadian dollars with its core model. That trim doesn't really come with a whole lot, but if you option an extra $1,500, you get a climate package, which includes heated steering wheel, rear heated seats, as well as a heat pump. Moving on to the mid trim, which is the plus model. In that model, you get a panoramic sunroof, parking sensors, 360 camera, and a bit of an interior change in terms of the texture and the materials. Now, this right here is the ultimate trim. This includes the beautiful 20 inch rims that you can see here. I think Volvo does a really good job making rims. They look very modern and it really fits the car well, I think, as well as adaptive cruise control and lane centering. In addition to that, you get a Harman Kardon 13 speaker sound system. And as you'd expect, all of the neat features like heated seats, heated steering wheel, heated rear seats, panoramic sunroof, and you get a suede interior as well. So what's under the hood of this thing? Let's find out. Well, not a whole lot. This is actually a storing space for potentially your charger. And then down here you get your fix, fix it flat tire kit. This is just enough space to put your mobile charger. But what's really under the hood? You get a single rear motor, 248 horsepower, 228 pound-feet of torque. But I assure you, it feels a heck of a lot more, which we'll find out later on when we go for a drive. Underneath the vehicle is also a huge battery for this size of vehicle, a, an 82 kilowatt hour battery that is rated for 471 kilometers of range. You can charge this thing at a fast charger at 200 kilowatt, so you can get 10% to 80% battery charge within 28 minutes. Now, looking at the exterior, these headlights are refreshed for 2023 model and it's a carryover for 2024 model year. Looks great. These daytime running lights look fantastic. Unfortunately, Volvo with these vehicles have this annoying thing where you can't keep the vehicle turned on. So as soon as I leave the car, it turns off. So I can't show you right now what the daytime running lights look like, but I'll insert some clips. Now down here you have a 360 camera along with a closed off grille. Looks quite cool and it's instantly recognizable that it is a electric vehicle. Now moving on to the side, we've got Michelin X-Ice winter tires on. It does a good job in the snow. As you can see, finally, we've got some snow back in Ontario. And what's interesting about these tire setup is that it is staggered. So 235 up front and 255 at the rear. Now looking to the back, this is overall a very good looking small SUV with the iconic tail light that goes down from the roof line, XC40, as well as recharge badge right there. The trunk space, let's get into it. We can kick and open the trunk. Got a decent amount of trunk space here. Volvo has optioned this vehicle with a cargo tray, cargo mat. Unfortunately, with the cargo mat, you can't really take advantage of the clever designs of these compartments divider, which Again, I'll insert a clip showing you how that works. And you have a pass through here as well as the seats come down pretty much flat. Let me show you. So this latch, the headrest comes down immediately and it folds down flat. If you're passed through as well, that works great. 
Yep, when I slam this back, the center armrest falls down. It's not a huge problem, but there you go. Closing this trunk. Another nice feature about the recharge here in Canada is that only the recharge gets the two-tone roof. So the recharge, as you can see here, a neat touch with the badging here, gets a black roof. Now let's step inside the vehicle and take a look at the space. So, inside the rear seats, I get plenty of legroom here. Seats are quite comfortable. My own and I have ample amount of headroom as well. Got a really nice panoramic sunroof here. Headroom plenty. One thing I would say is that these seats are a bit too straight. I wish they could put in an adjustment for the seats that you could slant back and forth. Fortunately, that's not available in this XC40. With that said, everything in terms of touch feels quite nice here. The Volvo has gone with a leather-free interior. This is sort of a textile. A, what they call a microtech and in front we have a suede material here on the door panel over there we've got some pretty nice texture as well these feels a bit like carpet and it's a nice touch because I don't see a lot of these in other vehicles of course with the ultimate trim you get a topography light up dash trim right there Unfortunately, they don't extend to the rear. It would be nice if they extended that portion to the rear as well. Now, the visibility from the back is pretty nice. However, this piece makes me feel a little bit claustrophobic. It is clearly a design cue, but this would have been nicer if it was clear glass. Unfortunately, this is more of a styling thing on behalf of Volvo. Let's jump into the front and see what that feels like. So stepping in, again, a very nice environment with these topography trims. These, these are neat because at night they glow, uh, they illuminate and it looks fantastic when you're driving. These seats are very comfortable, uh, quite a lot of settings along with an extendable leg rest only available on the plus model if I'm correct or above. Now these seats are great and it's suede material. In the lower trims you get slightly different materials. The base trim you get more of a cloth material. The mid trim plus trim you get a fusion between the Microtech and the cloth. Now you can also option this vehicle with a wool blend material which also gets you the crystal gear shifter but this one doesn't have it and we have featured that trim in a previous video on the C40 recharge so the center screen here 9 inch over here and 12 inch instrument display instrument cluster display gets the job done not much to configure really simple it is Android Auto, again, not much to customize, not the best infotainment that I've used before. You have some pretty simple information like your estimated range, your consumption, all that stuff, and then you could have Apple CarPlay, but that's only wired, unfortunately. But what's nice is it's built in Google Maps and your Google Assistant, which works pretty well. Now in the center screen here, let's turn on the vehicle. So turning on the vehicle, there is no button here. So really what you have to do is put it into drive or something, and then the vehicle turns on automatically. Over here, not much to customize. Hopefully you can see this, see this clear enough. Um, just the speedometer on the left and the tachometer, which is really just a power gauge on the right because this is an electric vehicle and the center you get a maps 
or you get the trip meter that's about it you can turn it off as well but it shows empty in the pole stars this is slightly improved where the side gauges will enlarge and go into the center as well but Volvo hasn't gotten that update yet and down at the bottom you see your range your battery percentage um, as well as your fuel consumption well electricity consumption um, over this trip so on and so forth going over some of the other buttons and stuff you get memory seats in this vehicle your Harman Kardon sound system which sounds fantastic you get blind spot control or monitor as well that portion of the mirror lights up and you also get some pretty nice knobs for your volume control as well as your climate control and stuff like that but most of the time you'd have to go into touch screen and change some of these items which is not the most intuitive however Google Assistant is here to help you do that stuff and it works most of the time which is great heated steering wheel is of course nice the heated steering wheel goes all the way to three levels and it gets quite hot um, when it's on level three after a couple of minutes so that's great you also get a wireless charger here I would prefer this to be off to the side or something so it doesn't take up the entire space you get a nice little I would say ashtray type situation here um, and then also a little trash bin down here that you could take out or install that's a neat touch not a lot of vehicles have this little trash tray here um, so good for Volvo to have that for us taking a look around the vehicle let's go for a drive putting it to drive we technically already did this vehicle has one pedal drive but it's only one option so you can't it's on or off and there's another there's another option that's called auto but it feels really weird it's not very predictable when it turns on and when it turns off so my recommendation is to keep it on on or off I would say that the one pedal drive is a little bit on the aggressive side I take off my foot and it brakes quite aggressively I wish they just made a couple of levels that I can just choose from other than that the vehicle is of course extremely silent the vehicle has 247 248 horsepower I believe but it feels a heck of a lot more than that and if we slow down a little bit and do an acceleration on the ramp there let me also show you what the fuel the efficiency is oh just stepped on it and it really does a pretty good job getting to speed I feel the lunge from my back don't really have any issues with the power figure now of course you can spend twenty five to three thousand dollars more depending on the trim to get a twin motor version that gets you 400 horsepower that has also been updated for 2024 with a more rear biased motor setup so a 250 horsepower motor in the back and a 150 horsepower motor in the front so feels a little bit more engaging to drive and this does too which I'll get to more when we arrive to our twisty road section arriving at our twisty road section vehicle generally drives very well in the snow it does slide around a little bit more as expected that it is a rear-wheel drive vehicle now today's weather is quite cold and we had some blowing snow on the street driving over here so let's find out how these tires and how the overall package with the battery at the bottom feels in terms of handling so a bit, a bit of a scenic route here car drives well the suspension is on the firmer side um, and at times you feel that it is bumpy so I feel like we could have had a slightly more slightly softer suspension that would have done the job for this vehicle especially in this class 
considering it's not a performance vehicle or anything like that. Oh yeah, that's quite nice because you can feel that you're, you're being pushed um, instead of being pulled like a front wheel drive car. It's not gonna let you slide off or anything like that. It adds to the driving experience for sure. So there are no drive modes to speak of. And something that I hate about this vehicle is the fact that you, if you wanna change any of the driving things, you'd have to go into the settings with this notoriously difficult to use system and scroll down and select your options like your one pedal drive i wish they would just have this settings somewhere easy or even like a button or something like that on the steering wheel that would make it so much easier to use at the end of the day one pedal drive is something that you probably want to turn on and off depending on the situation and stuff like that and then you do actually get a steering feel firm on and off um, it does a little bit of it does add a little bit of the weight but not a whole lot that you would notice unless you do a back-to-back. -back. Now, of course, we would have to talk a little bit about the XC40 gas or mild hybrid variant. So that vehicle actually has similar power figure, but on paper, according to Volvo, is a bit faster. So that does zero to 60 in the six second range, and this, does it at the seven second range. We have a little bit of an open road here, so let's try to do a launch. Now, this vehicle, for some reason, does benefit from a brake boost, which is weird because if we do a brake boost here, it does feel like it's accelerating a little bit more, which is quite fun, but you do feel the most of the torque when you're around the 20 kilometer range up until around 70, anything or 70, 80 or even 90, anything on highway speed when you're accelerating at speed already it does feel like it lacks a little bit of the thrust. But that of course is due to the fact that the motor only has around 250 horsepower. Now talking a little bit more about the gasoline variant, which is now mild hybrid, um, those give out approximately the same amount of horsepower. Um, it's a little bit faster, but it is about $10,000 per trim cheaper than this one would be after the federal discount. Now, just to remind you, this ultimate XC40 recharge single motor is 75,000 Canadian dollars and $70,000 after the federal discount here we get in Ontario. That's kind of pricey for a size of vehicle like this. And if you can get the gas equivalent for $10,000 off with similar performance, of course you'd have to pay for gas, but how long would it really take to get the gas savings? In a turn like this, again, quite fun. It handles quite well. Also, it turns in, turn in are sharp, sharp enough. By no means, Volvo is a, is a performance vehicle company, or this is by no means a performance vehicle, but it still does the job quite well. I think the weight of the vehicle is down low because the battery pack is down there. So the center of gravity is low and in turn, the handling feels quite well doing those kind of turns. And the rear wheel drive also helps because you, I didn't feel any understeer over there. It feels quite balanced and I'm quite impressed by the driving dynamics of this vehicle. Again, the suspension could be tuned a little bit better. I think going over bumps, it's a little bit stiff, but at the same time, the suspension, the springs are quite, aren't hard enough to the point where when I turn, there's no body roll. So I think a bit of a better tuning would help the vehicle overall. Now going to a little bit, a little bit of a countryside road here, let's talk a little bit about the efficiency. So I am getting about 20, between 23 to 25 on the highway 
um, kilowatts per 100 kilometers and in the city I'm getting well below that around 15 or so if I'm just cruising along on the road here um, we can take a look at what the economy is right now your data or your efficiency may vary quite a bit as you can hear there are some wind noises here so it definitely brings the economy down the adaptive cruise control works phenomenally unfortunately the lane centering isn't as confidence inspiring as i would like sometimes it does weird things you know turn quite abruptly within the lane and follows the car in front to do a couple of these weird things that make me feel like it's not that uh, confident so i would I would hope that Volvo can improve a little bit on the lane centering and lane keeping system. The adaptive cruise control, the braking, that's very good. Um, ample amount of space in front, brake first, slows down, slows you down first and then creeps up to the car in front. So that's a great, that's great work from Volvo. Overall this vehicle is on the expensive side. I don't, I'm not sure if I would spend the extra 10 grand after all of the discounts to purchase a similar vehicle that's electric. Of course you get the benefit of charging it, but at the same time, you're also increasing your chance of being stranded in the cold weather. Like, like in Canada, your range is a concern. Sometimes, um, realistically, I'm getting around 350-ish kilometers in the winter here in Canada. So. I feel like I would just save that $10,000 and get a gas version. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below if you think this vehicle is worth $75,000 Canadian dollars or $70,000 after the government rebates. Or would you go with a lower trim that this starts at 63, so around 58 if you don't, if it's after the federal discount or would you just get a gas version the ultimate trim that still would be around only sixty thousand dollars let me know down in the comments below thank you for watching and please like and subscribe see you next time